Do you feel like you had that biological desire? I never had it, but I was just all career um, driven. And then I realized time's ticking. Those Chinese fathers want yeah. that want that air. Very subtle, very subtle. <laughs> yeah, and about how old were you? I was 38, 39. The first time we tried, I had a miscarriage, and I just felt like, oh my God, I'm someone who has always been so in control of my life and such a career-oriented, you know, type A kind of person that when that happened, I was just shocked. Like, what did I do wrong? You know, and how did I how did I cause this? And it's just, you know, nobody talks about it. Yeah. You know, it, it's like women feel ashamed. And when I did finally get pregnant, I didn't want to tell you. I, I had such a hard time because you wanted it so bad. You tried so many things. We actually did think about IVF before we started. The IVF doctor there was just like, I see a lot of women coming into my office who look great, they look young, but, you know, their ovaries suck. He said that. That's what ah. my doctor told me yeah. too. See this graph? Your egg quality is down here. And then my tear came down. <laughs> what about you, Mimi? I, we didn't get married until I was 40. And I just happened to have one of those stories that, you know, you, you start trying and you quickly figure out it's not happening. And when I was 30, one of my friends said, you know, you should freeze your eggs. And I was like, what? what? And yeah. I look back and think that was like the best advice I never took. But can you imagine there's a commercial, freeze your egg? <laughs> It's true, there aren't any. <laughs> there probably should be. <laughs> it's happy hour on a Wednesday night at one of those swanky Manhattan hotels. And all these women are here for one reason, to learn about egg freezing. Women nowadays are in charge of everything, and we want you to be in charge of your own fertility as well. Let's connect the dots. For the first time in U.S. history, women are more likely to have a college degree than men. And at the same time, these women with college degrees are waiting longer and longer to have children. But here's the thing about your biological clock. It doesn't give a about your career goals. The idea here is not that, oh, cool, I'm going to save these eggs till I'm 50. I really need to make this clear, the older that you are, so women in their 40s have higher risks of high blood pressure of pregnancy, higher risks of miscarriage, higher risks of diabetes of pregnancy, higher risk of growth issues, higher risk we of... We spend so much time discussing contraception and ways not to become pregnant that we're really never taught as women about trying to become pregnant and what those limitations may be in the future. I'm 27 years old. Does it make sense to freeze my eggs now if I want to wait until I'm 37 to have kids? If you go through this process, does that decrease your chance of conceiving naturally? Do I have until menopause to try to become pregnant with my own eggs? What about women who are in their middle 30s and early 40s? Is it hopeless? And because women really don't have as much knowledge as they should about their reproductive health, a lot of people think that this is not true, that we're putting fear into women. And unfortunately, I would love to say that it's the case that age does not play an impact on fertility and reproductive health, but it absolutely does. There really is a clock. By the time women hit their mid to late 30s, their chances of getting pregnant dramatically decrease. Over time, we lose both quantity and quality of eggs, unlike men who make new sperm every three months. Lucky them. So the idea is that while the rest of your body continues to age, you can literally freeze the age of your eggs in time. The patients take injectable, it's called gonadotropins. They take two to four injections per day uh, for an average seven to 10 days. They're having their ovaries monitored and having their blood drawn. And when it looks like the patient is ready for an egg retrieval, then they take a shot of uh, HCG to make them ovulate. What's your count now? Around eight. Around eight and then we do an egg retrieval in the operating room and we use a vaginal ultrasound. It has a needle attached. It goes into the ovary, takes out the eggs, and then the eggs are frozen via a process called vitrification in the laboratory. This procedure used to be considered experimental, but this new technology is revolutionizing the industry. Eggs are now more likely to survive after thawing. 
By 2012, the experimental label was lifted. And the following year, the number of women freezing their eggs jumped nearly 60%. But even as technology advances, there's a catch to this whole egg freezing thing. At any age, it's never a guarantee. But the longer women wait to freeze, the worse their chances may be. So the majority of women who are coming to me for egg freezing are between the ages of 35 and 40. Realistically, I would like to encourage women to come at less than 35. However, many women who are younger may not be emotionally or financially ready to do this. A lot of my patients will come to me and say, well, I really don't want to have to do this. And that's just never where I intended myself to be. It's never where Shaleen intended to be. I was one of the women that you know, had to confront sort of where I was in life. I was in a long-term relationship, a seven-year relationship that didn't work out. I literally cried for a year. I thought, I'm mourning the loss of carrying my own child. And there was, you know, a lot of questions about, gosh, did I wait too long? It's sad because, you know, some thought, well, you put your career first. So what if a woman puts her career first? So what if she wants to be successful? When she was 37 and at the height of her career at a major biotech company, Shaleen started freezing her eggs. I did it as soon as I knew about it. For me, I feel like I'm sort of a pioneer. I was the first of my girlfriends to do that, with the exception of this one. And Wendy, you also froze eggs because I had just turned 30. That was prior to vitrification, so it was still in a very experimental phase. Does insurance cover this? Most do not. So the majority of the women that come through have to pay out of pocket or finance it. Medications, retrieval, and freezing are approximately ten to $15,000 per cycle. And the older you are, the more cycles you'll most likely need in order to get enough healthy eggs to potentially have a child. So Shaleen and Wendy founded Nest Egg Fertility, one of a few agencies that for a fee negotiates lower rates with doctors and drug companies for women trying to freeze. We really want to push the envelope in making this affordable and accessible to more women because, quite frankly, it's not fair. I spent $60,000 myself. I've done the right things in my life, and now all of a sudden I'm at a place where I'm having to spend thousands of dollars to preserve my fertility. We really wanted to challenge not only the physicians to come up with affordable packages, yeah. but also the drug company. Do you think the ability to do this is just widening that income disparity issue in that this, this privilege is really only allowed for women who can afford it. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is close the gap. It's always going to be there because it is a luxury um, until insurance companies can step up and say this is a real medical issue for women. Your fertility will not last forever the viability of, of the eggs once they're harvested. It may or may not work, there are no guarantees. What are someone's chances of having successful eggs? Because this is still relatively new and we're just now in the last couple of years getting this surge of women who are interested in freezing their eggs, you're still looking at five to seven years down the road before we're able to collect really good, solid statistics. And because of that lack of data, Experts do not recommend egg freezing for healthy women who are solely trying to beat the biological clock. Most of the eggs are still frozen. And so are Shaleen's. She's 44 and still hopes to thaw her frozen eggs and one day have a baby. I didn't end up needing them. I felt very fortunate that I was able to have biological children, uh, my first at 35 and my second at 37. So Not using your frozen not eggs. Not using my frozen eggs. I was going to donate them to science. That's when she found out that a friend she knew from kickboxing class was struggling to get pregnant. Um, I was a teenager when I had rhabdomyosarcoma. Did you know after your treatment and after you went into remission that you wouldn't be able to have a kid? No. No, nobody um, ever explained. Nobody said do it when you're young or that would be severe problems. So you were trying for nine years to have a baby? Yeah, yeah. And you started when you were about 34? So pretty yes. young still. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, when he called and said, um, so I'm going to donate them to science if you want them. And I said, I'll take them. 
So she explained, you know, that they were frozen with old technology, not to put too many eggs in one basket. I think I was more nervous than Christine was during this process. When I said you can have them, I was thinking like, I wonder if I shouldn't have said this because the chances are not very good, right. <laughs> you know, from, you know, where we were at medically then and where we were at now. So how old were you when you had Francis? 44. I mean, it wasn't until after that I really knew how low the chances were that I was like, oh my God, she's really a miracle baby. How does it feel though when you when you look at her? Do you think, oh, she does she look like me or does she have any of my characteristics? <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's it's impossible not to have those thoughts because you know she has the same um, genetic relation to me as my two boys. I'll follow you. The difference is when I look at Frances, I look at her similar to I would say the best I could describe it as my nephews, but I don't feel like her mother at all. <laughs> Come here, I have a question for you. So who is this person? I'll make a pig. Yeah, I'll and who's Wendy? Egg. Egg donor. <laughs> She's an egg donor? Egg a pig, you want me to make a pig? <laughs> that is hilarious. So cute. It just is. <laughs> it, it is, it is.